Hey guys, welcome to another Caliber Wings video. I'm Noah Lee, and uh, we are filming this uh, from out in the nature of Shenzhen, China again. And along the way, we show you some scenery of uh, Shenzhen. Hope you like it. I'm going to share with you guys some uh, tips and techniques on how to weather your own die cast model. All you need is some oil paints, paint brushes, and a lot of time and patience. So for those who are the first time watching this video, um, thank you very much for coming by. Uh, we really appreciate you. We need your support. On our channel if you can please uh, hit that subscribe button like the video and of course comments in the comment section below all comments will be read and answered accordingly stay tuned at the end of the video because I'm going to give you guys an update on what's going on in caliber in the meantime let's get into the video there are basically three kinds of brushes that we use for this technique the applicator, the spotter, and the blushing brush. You can estimate the size of these brushes with my hand as a reference. The applicator is for you to line the panel lines with the oil paint. The spotter is what you would use to put on the lighter shade on the surface panel of the model. I will show you later on how this spotter easily damages the bristles and how you will need to snip off, make the brush shorter in order for the application to be more effective. Finally, the blushing brush. It is a brush used by ladies when they do makeup and as the name suggests it, it, it is actually used for blushes and you want this brush to be as soft as possible and yes you can actually pick up the makeup brush by itself the softness of the bristles will help you to spread out the oil paint evenly on the surface Next, we have some oil paint. We use a solvent like turpentine or even lighter fluid to create the mixture by diluting the oil paint to a consistency as shown. We apply the mixture with the applicator onto the model Focusing on panel lines and whenever there is recess areas on the aircraft model. The good thing about working with oil paints is that it does not dry quickly. It allows you time to manipulate and achieve the desired effect that you want. After applying the wash on the panel and leaving it for about a minute or so, you can then wipe it off with a cloth. If the oil paint is stubborn on your surface, you can use the solvent that you have used to dilute the solution, dab a little bit on the cloth and that would easily remove excess oil paints for you.
here we see a clear comparison between the model before the wash and after the wash. You will notice that there are some areas where it is hard to get into to clean. You can use a cotton swab as shown to assist you to remove the excess oils. The same technique is applied on the top of the model and then wiping it off leaving the shadowy effect. And here we have a comparison between the model before and after the application of the oil paint. Next we tune the highlight color of the monocap. We require white plus blue to come up with a light blue shade to correspond to the contrast of the bluish grey of the Monarchette's base colour. So this is why we call it the spotting tool. We are basically trying to create little spots onto the surface of the model so that the blushing tool can be applied to even them out to create a natural finish. If you feel that the highlight is not enough, you can go ahead to add more spotting. There is no right or wrong in weathering and you can create the colors and effect and highlights to your liking. The idea of this step is to highlight the surface of the model so that there's a contrast that is clear to see. Again, we have a comparison between the model that has only the wash and the model that has the highlights applied. The difference is clear. We carry on applying the highlights of spotting onto the wing. The cloth is there to help us remove excess oils. We do not want too much oil to be on this step. We want the oils to be as light as possible. As you do more, you will notice and adjust the amount of oils accordingly. Having too much oils is never good because you don't want clumps on your model. You want the effect to be as smooth and thin as possible. You will notice that the brush gets damaged pretty easily as that, and that is when you need to snip off the bristles to make them shorter because there is no point in having a long bristle to do the spotting technique. The spotting technique requires a brush similar to dry brushing that is short to accomplish the task. In this example, you can see how the spotting tool, the spotting brush is used to apply the white finishes on the F14 surface. Now we come to the darker color of the Mona Cat. So for this, we require the color to be a little bit darker so that it corresponds nicely. The same spotting technique is now applied with the darker shade onto the darker shade 
of the model. Another example of how we apply the spotting onto the model and as you go along you will notice that the spotting brush itself when it's dry enough meaning that when the oil paint has left its bristles you can actually use the spotting brush to help you with some of the blushing technique as shown here The idea is to even out the lighter color on the surface of the model on which it's being applied. The oils as shown in this demonstration requires about a week's time to dry. So you have to be patient and sometimes you have to wait until the first layer is completely dry before you decide to add on another layer. Otherwise you will be moving or displacing the first layer that hasn't dried completely. Once the oil paint dries or cures, it will be permanent on your model. But before it does that, it can always be wiped off if you made a mistake and you can start again. Here we use the blushing brush to even out any uneven spotting of oil paints on the surface of the model. Remember that the blushing brush should always be kept as clean as possible because any excess oil paint on the brush will hinder your process. And always remember to test uh, on a test piece before working on your actual model. Once you get a feel and are confident with your technique, then you can weather your own model. Have fun and good luck! Alright, hope you guys had enjoyed uh, that presentation. So now we'll get to the updates. So we just put out a post about what would be the next uh, or rather what would be the what would be the propeller subject that we should embark on for the first one we've got some uh, well first of all I'd like to thank you guys all for your valuable comments suggestions feedback recommendations uh, but it seems like the current uh, front runners uh, tracking up uh, the charts is the S tracker so the tracker is also something that is uh, pretty uh, interesting to me as, as a teenager I did purchase uh, the tracker not knowing anything about the, the aircraft just because it looked really good <laughs> So um, the next one that we have is uh, something that I've never actually seen before when I was uh, doing plastic modeling uh, That would be the Tiger Cat the F 7F if I got the destination correct so yeah uh, I will be investigating more into the Tiger Cat to see uh, the range of liveries that we can apply and if it is enticing enough uh, the Tiger Cat could well follow in the footsteps behind the S2F tracker so in the coming few days we will be uh, extending out uh, invitation for collectors to you know help us provide information on the tracker if you can you know help us to develop the model as accurately as possible you know the finally the model is for you right we make the model and it's finally gonna be uh, on your display shelves you're gonna be the one appreciating it and it would be interesting if you guys actually help you know in the process of each building block of the of the subject so yeah, uh, 
you know, I'm going to be getting busy real soon uh, to start my research on the tracker. Um, you know, I'm going to look at ways to make the folding wings something that we need not be a separate part. So that is something that I'm going to try to do. Uh, again, no promises. Who knows, in the end of the day, it might not be feasible on 72 scale. Uh, but I have a certain mechanism in mind. Uh, it will be put to the test. You know, if at the end of the day, the, the, the wings have, have to be a separate apart, then I'll have to submit to them. But I'm gonna do my best to see what we can do to make the wings actually uh, intact as one and be able to fold and still reveal uh, the details uh, in between. That pretty much covers it for now. Uh, Once again, to everybody, stay safe, keep happy, enjoy life. Take care.